and gentlemen, the story you are about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a narcotics detail. You get a tip that a man is peddling heroin at his place of residence. He's a known user. Your job? Check it out. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Tuesday, September 6th. It was hot in Los Angeles. We were working the night watch out of narcotics detail. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Walter. My name's Friday. We were on our way out from the office, and it was 9.33 p.m. when we got to the corner of 8th and Temple. Converted garage. Is that the right address? Yeah, I want you to swing around here at the corner. We can park across the street up there. Okay. Yeah, right up here will do. All right. Sure isn't much of a house. Looks more like a store or something. Yeah. You sure that's where he's living, Joe? Yeah, and Nicky says the place used to be a garage. Oh? Uh-huh. fellow who ran it went broke. He turned it into living quarters. Oh, I see. How long has Denson been staying here? About six months. How long? No, he's got his family with him. Wife, two or three kids. All uh-huh. right. Now, what do you think? Should we tap him now? Let's give it a couple of minutes, see if he's drawn any customers. Okay. Is this Nicky sure about all this? Yeah, he says he is. Says Denson's loaded for action, 30 or 40 caps. Just got him tonight, huh? Yeah. Think he know who we got him from? If he does, he wouldn't tell me. Joe. Hmm? Front door. Yeah. Must be the wife. Wonder who she's looking for. I don't see anybody. I guess she doesn't either. Well. Well, that might make it a little easier for her. What do you mean? She left the door open. Approximately 45 minutes earlier, we'd received a telephone call from an informant named Nikki Corbin. Corbin had reported that Slim Denson, a known narcotics user who lived at the corner of Temple and Eighth, had some 30 or 40 caps of heroin in his possession. Corbin said Denson was getting ready to push the stuff. Frank and I waited across the street from the Denson residence for 26 minutes. During that time, no one came in or out of the house, but the front door remained open. 9.59 p.m., a young man turned the corner and headed into the converted garage. Five minutes later, he reappeared and started down the street. Should we talk to him? Yeah. Wait a minute, Frank. Huh? I guess he forgot something. Yeah. Going back inside. Now, well, let's give him some company. The man re-entered the Denson residence. As soon as he disappeared through the front door, I moved in after him. At the same time, Frank went around to the rear of the building. The garage had been crudely partitioned into rooms, and the front area contained an overstuffed sofa, a dining room table, and chairs, and a TV set. In addition to the young man who had gone in ahead of me, there were two other people in the room. The woman who had previously appeared in the doorway and a sallow-faced, middle-aged man. Now, hold on, Mr. Where do you think Police you're officer, going? you're under arrest. Police? That's please. right. Don't move any of you. It's a fine time for you to be showing up. You ought to be ashamed. How's that? Three hours ago. That's when you should have been here. That's when we needed you. Oh, now, take it easy, Alice. Don't start raising those things. A little girl only seven years old running around the city like this. Lord knows what could have happened to her. You call a copy, don't even show up till three hours later. I told you, hold your mouth. Hell, she's my baby. I was half out of my mind when she didn't come home from school. No thanks to you that she got home at all. I don't know what you're talking about, lady. Elsie, that's what I'm talking about, my baby. Yeah. Anybody else around, Frank? Yeah, a couple of youngsters sleeping in one of the back rooms, that's it. All right, now move over to that wall. Go on, move. I've never heard of such a thing. Little girl gets lost on the way home from school. You send for a policeman that treats you like you was You better dead. get it straight, lady. You're under arrest. All of you. It hasn't got anything to do with your daughter. Arrest? Hey, but you, you can't arrest me. I ain't done anything. Is that so? you got to have a reason for picking somebody up, a good reason. Suspicion of violation of the State Narcotics Act. Is that good enough? What? Come on, over against the wall. Come on, move. I'll check them, Joe. Well, I see. You sure are making a mistake. Yeah, we always do. Well, it's not any mistake. You're plumb out of your mind. That's what you are. Sure. I called you on the count of Elsie. On the count of she got lost. Yeah, all right, they're clean. Uh, that's why we wanted you. Help her find her. It didn't have nothing to do with no narcotics. If your daughter was missing and you reported it, you'd have had plenty of help. Of course we reported it three hours ago. That's when you called them, Slim. Huh? When you went down to the drugstore, you said you was going to use the phone. Oh. Well, you called them, didn't you? 
I guess maybe I forgot. Forgot? Your own flesh and blood, your own baby? What's the difference? She's home, ain't she? Blood difference. You give me your word. Now, look, home. look, look. You found your little girl. You got something else to worry about now. I sure don't know what you're aiming at, mister. You don't, huh? Neither, neither do I. You, you're accusing me of having something to do with narcotics, and I ain't never been mixed up with dope. I, I never even touched the stuff, not once. Well, then we'll start with you. Well, go out right ahead. I ain't got nothing to hide. What's your name? Boston, Jerry Boston. How old are you? 23. You live around here? Down the street, four houses east. What do you do for a living, Jerry? I work in a southern station over on Pico. You married? Yeah. You got any kids? No, not yet. We're expecting one next month. Mm -hmm. Where do you think you're going? I just wanted to see if the youngsters are still you stay sleeping. right here. They'll be all right. Well, you're only talking to Jerry. I don't know We'll why. get around to you soon enough. Now, why don't you sit down and take it easy, lady? Better do like this, huh? Bullying a person in our own home. Why'd you come over here tonight, Jerry? I heard about Elsie that she was missing. I wanted to find out if they found her. All right. You came in, you went out, and then you came back in again. Is that it? Yeah, that's right. Well? Well, Kitty wanted me to ask Mrs. Denson here something. Kitty's my wife. Yeah. I forgot when I was here first, so I had to come back. What was it your wife wanted to find out? Come on, Jerry. Oh, wasn't nothing important, just just something about when you're having a baby. Uh-huh. You want to step over here now, Jerry? Huh? Over here, please. Side the table. Sure. All right, empty your pockets, will you? Yes, sir. Take everything out. All right. That's it. All right, now turn the pockets inside out. How much money you got there, Jerry? Twenty, twenty-five bucks. You always carry that much cash, too? Oh, well, I got paid today. Mm-hmm. Okay, son, roll up your sleeves. Do what? Your sleeves. Come on, roll them up. All right. A little high. Come on. Okay. Okay, roll them back down. You and the dancing's pretty good friends, right? Well, we're neighbors. Mm -hmm. How long you know each other? Four or five months, I guess. However long they've been living here. Hey, hey, what the heck are you doing with that lamp? Why, is the light body? Well, it's kind of bright when you're looking right into it. Okay, Jerry, put the stuff back in your pocket. Now take a seat someplace. Hey, wait a minute. You mean i got to stay here? For the time being, yeah. Well, look, Kitty will be worried. I only thought I was going to be gone a couple of minutes. The idea of putting a nice young fellow like Jerry through all this foolishness. Well. Let's see how well you do it now, Denson. Huh? Come on, over here. You already been wrong once, Dad. Maybe. No sense carrying on like this. No sense at all. Now, why don't you fellas just admit you made a mistake and go on your way? Over here. Come on, quit stalling, will you? Move. <clears throat> now, go ahead. You empty your pocket. Is that all of it? You got every little do, Dad. Turn them inside out. Whatever you say. What do you do for a living? Well, at the moment, I'm sort of looking around, you might say. Yeah, I bet you are. You got a family, Denson. How are you feeding them? Oh, we manage. We manage pretty good. How? Don't you worry none about my children. They ain't going hungry as long as I can work. You live off your wife, do you? Now, I ain't no way to put it at all. She's just helping out while I'm having a rough spell. All right, Denson, roll up your sleeves, man. Come on, get them up, will you? Hmm. <clears throat> tracks from the Southern Pacific. Yeah. Well, look here. I must have scratched myself the other day. You know, I was doing some carpenter work. How long have you been a height fella? Afraid I don't know what you mean. Quit wasting our time, Denson. Now, how long? Well, I reckon ain't no point in lying to you gentlemen. Fact of the matter is, I did do a little chipping once in a while when I was young. Mm -hmm. Of course, that was some years Those ago. Those marks haven't even started scarring yet. Hmm? And from the looks of them, you're building up to a big batch of infections there. Must be them scratches I was telling you about. All right, Denson, where is it? Huh? The stuff, where'd you stack it? Come on, Denson. We know you got 30 caps. We're going to find it anyway, so I hold out. 30 caps? A guy like me couldn't afford that much stuff. Now, you ought to have more things. What'd you do, give it to your wife? You ought to say a thing like that. Well, even if I did have a little H, I sure wouldn't want her to get involved. Last person in the world. Now, you can say whatever you got a mind to where I'm concerned. Now, you just leave her out of this. You're pretty anxious to go into the bedroom a little while ago, Mrs. Denson. I told you leave her out. Now, if you won't do what I tell Take you... Take it easy, Denson. It don't matter what happens to me. You can lock me up, give me the gas chamber, don't matter. But my wife, she's a fine woman. I won't have you attacking her reputation. You can throw me in jail if you want to. Stand me up in front of a firing squad. Hey, come on, Denson. But there's no reason to drive her in, too. Now, sit down. 
She ain't done nothing. No reason to drag her in. How about it, Miss Denson? I just don't know what you're looking for, mister. I swear I don't. Well, either you've still got it on you, or you've got it in the bedroom. Which is it? Well, you're not giving us any choice. Guess you better put in a call to the office, Frank. Yeah. Ask them they'll send a team over to take this joint apart. Right. Tell them we're bringing in a couple of suspects. See if they can get a policewoman to stand by so there'll be somebody to search Mrs. Denson when we get there. All right. Matt, you just wait a minute, mister. Can't arrest us. Not both Slim and me. Is that right? What about my youngsters? I won't leave them here alone. Can you get somebody to stay with them? Well, I guess Josie will be home before too Who's long. Who's Josie? Our oldest girl. Where is she now? Went to the movies with... With her boyfriend. She's full grown, Almost 19. How soon do you expect her back? I don't know for sure. Pretty soon. Hour, maybe. Uh-uh. We can't wait that long. Looks like we'll have to take the kids in, too. All right, Joe. I'll tell them downtown. Yeah, that's Slim. You hear what they're saying? Yeah. You just gonna sit there? You gonna let them drag our youngsters out of bed in the middle of the night? Isn't there a thing I can do, huh? I tried to tell them. You heard me try. I'm not gonna have my kids in jail. Not for you. Not for nobody. It ain't right to get a man through his family, mister. Yeah. I told you before, don't make no difference what becomes of me. You can send me away. You can put me in prison the rest of my life. You can give me the gas chamber. Oh, you all through now. <sighs> you see, hon, I try. Want to go ahead with the call, Frank? Yeah. Probably take five or ten minutes to get the kids dressed, then we'll shove off. All right. I ain't going to stand for it, Slim. I warned you. Those kids ain't going to jail on account of you. Well... He asked me to hide it when we heard Jerry Boston coming up the block. Well? I put it inside my dress. All right, if I turn around. Yeah. I reckon it's just what you want. You know better than this, Mrs. Benson. What? There's no H in here. This is just his layout. It's, it's what he gave You're married to a guy who's been hooked for a long time. You've got a pretty good idea what this stuff looks like. We're not going to waste any more time here. Either you give us a cap or you go downtown. All four of us. I'll get them for you. You just tell us where they are. Don't listen to them, Alice, honey. Don't listen. Bedroom. Which one? Where the kids are sleeping. Go on. Under the pillar. Under Elsie's pillar. That's where he put it. See the youngest? Yes, sir. I'd appreciate it if you'd try not to wake her. She did a lot of wandering around when she's lost. She's all tuckered out. I had to tell him, Slim. I had to. It sure was a lousy trick, mister. What's that? Holding them youngsters over her head, making a fret about them just so you could break her down. Mm-hmm. Real lousy. You ain't got no kids your own, have you? No. Well, that's how I had it figured, the way you talked, Alice, the way you kept on her. Parent wouldn't act that way. Mm-hmm. Never in a million years. Not a real parent, that is. Well, there's just one thing that I don't understand here, Denson. What's that? How would you know? One of the pillows in the children's bedroom, Frank found an envelope which contained 32 caps of heroin. Denson admitted that the H belonged to him, but he refused to tell us where he'd acquired it. Jerry Boston denied any knowledge of the drug. We made arrangements for the two Danson children to be placed under protective custody of the juvenile division. 10.42 p.m., we took the Dansons and Jerry Boston down to the Narcotics Bureau for further questioning. Our investigation revealed that Boston was not implicated in the case, and he was released. 11.17 p.m., while Frank interrogated the Denson woman, I talked to her husband in the adjoining room. Oh, I never saw the like. You sure are hard to satisfy, mister. I told you the stuff was mine. Now, what more do you want? It just doesn't add up, Denson. I don't see why not. Well, you called it back at your place. What's you mean? Well, where would a hype like you get enough money to buy 32 caps? Well, I had me a little extra put away. Price was right, so I made a buy. Oh, no, don't give me your hand. You're scratching just to keep even with your habit. How bad you hook? Now, we've seen the marks on your arm. You want me to guess? Three caps a day. Is that about it? <sighs> All right, Denson, who's the stuff belong to? Look, fella, you're dead. We can make you on possession, maybe even on sale. Sale? Huh. You must be off your rocket. You know I never sold none of them. The story we got, you're already to start pushing. For all we know, you started. Anybody told you that? He's a liar. Mm-hmm. I ain't no pusher. I never have been. Then what are you doing with 32 caps? I keep telling you, mister, they were cheap. How cheap? Five bucks a cap. 
That's my reasonable for them these days. 165 bucks isn't reasonable. You never saw that much money. All right, who'd you buy them from? Ooh, wouldn't be nobody you know. What if you try me? I don't know myself. Uh huh. Ain't from L.A. Yeah. I met him last week, took a trip down south across the border. Oh, sure you did. That's how come I made me such a good buy. You bet. Now, you listen, Denson. We didn't drop in on you tonight just because we were in the neighborhood. Is that so? We wouldn't have been there if we didn't have information. You know that as well as I do. Well? Our info is that you just got those caps tonight. Well, I tell you, somebody sure has been spreading a lot of wild stories about me. They've been on the nose so far. Where are you spending your time these days? I reckon we covered that before. Well, I reckon we'll try it again. <laughs> I stayed at home mostly. Were you home yesterday? Sure was. Day before? Yeah, as far as I can remember. A real homebody, aren't you? I think you ought to stick pretty close, seems how the wife's working. Well, that's sure considerate of you. When was the last time you were downtown? We're about downtown. Maine, Alameda, anywhere in there. <laughs> Afraid I just don't recall. Last week, maybe? Oh, no, it wouldn't have been last week. I wasn't feeling rightly. Didn't go no place last week. Then how'd you get to Mexico? Guess my memory ain't as good as it used to be. Reckon I'm kind of mixed up. You sure are. All right, in here, thanks. Sit right over there. Now, now, honey, you take it easy. They can't do nothing to you. She knew where the stuff was. That ties her right into possession. Told you where to find it. What else do you want? Who do the caps belong to, Mrs. Denson? This can't. They belong to him. Where'd he get them? I don't know. Honest, I don't. Did you have any visitors tonight besides Jerry Boston? Well, come on. I can't think of nobody. Slim, you've got to do something. You've got to get me out of here. Any single solitary thing I can do. Else. I want to know what's happened to my kids. All right, take it easy, lady. They're in good hands. I want to know. They ain't never been away from me, not since they was born. They'll be all upset if I'm not there. Can't you understand how I feel? Yes, we can. <laughs> My fault, anyway. It's all my fault. No, no, honey, you oughtn't talk like that. Well, it is. I should have left you, Slim. I should have left you ten years ago when you first started digging dope. We wouldn't have had the other two kids. It'd just be Josie. Bad enough what's happened to her. Well, if you start worrying about Josie. It's high time somebody worried about her, ain't it? Going out with a married man. Wasn't for you and your dirty, filthy dope. She'd never have met him. Alice, well, I'm telling you, shut up. That's enough out of you, then. Oh, sure. He can't do no wrong as far as you're concerned. God give you a free bindle. That makes him a fine fella, don't it? Fit company for your daughter. Who are you talking about, Miss Denson? Kirk Helvey. That's who. He's the one to give Slim them caps. He's the one. Going out with Josie. First thing you know, she'll be on the stuff, too, just like a father. I know she's with tonight. Tell tonight. Me. Last night. Every night, I talked to her, talked to her till I was blue in the face. Just like a father, that's what she is, just like him. You know where they went? They said to the movies. No reason to believe them, though. You could have given us all this, Denson. Well, they wore my caps. I was just keeping them for Perk. Till he brought Josie home tonight. Boy, if he finds out what's happening, he's sure going to blow his back. Yeah. Guess maybe I got to shooting off my mouth too much. About having them 32 caps. Made me feel like a big man. Never had that much stuff for my whole life. Told some little boys it was mine. Just shows you how you can get in trouble from a little exaggerating. Yeah. Only had them caps a couple hours before you fellas showed up. A couple of hours. That's all it took. Look at this here mess on me. No, it took you a little longer than that, didn't you? What do you mean? Ten years. <laughs> From previous investigations, Frank and I knew that Perk Helvey was involved in the narcotics trade. He'd been arrested several times for possession, but so far he'd always managed to escape conviction. At the time of his last arrest, some five months ago, he had been in the company of his wife, Marjorie. When the wife was searched, three ounces of heroin were found on her person. Marjorie Helvey had not been known to us as a pusher or a user. But when her husband was questioned, he denied any knowledge of the dope. His wife was sentenced to a term at the women's state prison. 12.08 a.m., Frank and I drove back to the Denson residence. The place was deserted. We went inside to wait for Helvey and Josie Denson. 1.16 a.m. Well, if he wouldn't cop out to save his own wife, he's not going to give us anything. You know. Well, it sure is some family. Well, I can't help feeling sorry for the kids, though. Well, me too. Wait a minute. Somebody's out in front, though. Yeah. Well, how do you want to work it? Well, let's split him up. I'll talk to the girl. You take him in the other room and see what you can get. All right. 
You want to come in for a sec? Yeah, I left something here, remember? Guess they're all in bed. You hope your old man didn't shoot too many of my camp. Perk. Police officer, you're under arrest. Don't try anything, Ellie. Okay. Hey, yeah. what's going on here? Where is everybody? The folks are out. What'd they do? Get themselves pinned? Let me see your purse. Sure. Thing you want, help yourself. Come on, move over here. Uh, keep your hands out of your pockets and stand still. Okay. It's a good thing I ain't ticklish, huh? Yeah, all, right. all right. Come on, Ellie. Huh? I want to talk to you out in the back. Yeah, sure. you guys do? Draw straws for us? You don't look so sad about it, honey. You won. I'm not so sure of that. I got the smart one, huh? Your mother and father have been arrested. Oh? And it's not going to go easy on them. Who cares? The old man's a bum. Always has been. When I was a little girl, he was a lush. Now he's a hype. I don't notice any change. What about your mother? What about her? She's been trying to hold the family together, hasn't she? Might be better if it fell apart. I'm going to give it straight to you, young lady. Your folks say that the caps we found belong to your friend, Perk Helvey. Is that true? I wouldn't know. You'd know if you wanted to. It's going to be their word against his unless you step in. Include me out. Maybe you got a beef against your father. Maybe. Whatever you give me won't help him much. Might make a difference in your mother's case, though. Oh, come on. You don't care any more about my folks than I do. You're after Perk. It was his stuff, wasn't it? I don't know. You better think it over. Why should I? You don't mean anything to him. Isn't what he tells me. He's got a wife, hasn't he? The way I hear it, she's out of town. You know who sent her there? Nothing to keep the same thing from happening to you. It won't. You ever seen your mother cry, Josie? Well, I did tonight. She wasn't crying for herself either. It was for you and your kid sisters. You got a choice. Who's it going to be? Your mother or that two-bit pusher in there? Not a very nice way to talk about a friend of mine, is it? Is that your answer? I had a big night. I'm kind of tired. You got nothing on me, so I think I'll just toddle off to bed. You just stay put. Joe. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure with you yet. Stay here. You were through before you ever started. She doesn't care about her mother or anybody else. It'd be easier to crack Elvie, I think. No, it was. But he copped out. So this stuff is his. He's got some more in his car. What turned the key? I don't know. Maybe he likes this girl. Too. Well, maybe that's why he held back on his wife to get rid of her. When you guys get done comparing notes, I'd like to get a little shut-eye. We're done. Now you're playing it smart. No point in running into a stone wall, is there? Your mind's made up, huh? It's a general idea. You want to pin something on Perk, you'd better look someplace else. We don't have to, and we don't need you either. What? Neither does your mother. For her sake, I'm glad she doesn't. Who are you trying to hand? I'm not handing you anything. Perk gave us what we asked for, more than enough. I don't believe you. Why should he? Well, you better ask him. Don't make any sense. I would have backed him up. Whatever he told you, he knows that. Sure he does. Crazy jerk. Probably thinks he's doing me a favor, helping out my folks. Some joke, huh? Yeah. Who's it on? The story you've just heard is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On December 28th, trial was held in Department 98, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. <laughs> Percy Foster Hilsey entered a plea of guilty and was sentenced for violation of the State Narcotics Act, a felony. Porter Slim Denson and Josephine Annabelle Denson were tried and convicted of violation of the State Narcotics Act, a felony. Violation of the State Narcotics Act, a felony, is punishable by imprisonment for a period of from five years to life. The two young Denson children were placed under 24-hour supervision in a foster home. You have just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the office of Chief of Police W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Technical advisors, Captain Jack Donahoe, Sergeant Marty Wynn, Sergeant Vance Frazier. Heard tonight were Ben Alexander, Virginia Gregg, Jack Crucian, Joyce McCluskey, Herb Ellis. Script by Frank Burt. Music by Walter Schumann. Hal Gibney speaking. Watch an entirely different Dragnet case history each week on your local NBC television station. Please check your newspapers for the day and time. Chesterfield has brought you Dragnet, transcribed from Los Angeles.